Hello, my name is Jose. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about five things that I do to keep any racing simulator running. I work with a lot of people, whether it's private individuals or racing drivers uh, that have built their simulator and they've ended up connecting things just however they can. There's no consideration for cable management. So that's gonna be my first point is talking about cable management. This is really important um, when it comes to uh, EMI, so electromagnetic interference. It's a big issue. It's a big issue when you have a lot of hardware, if you're on carpet, or I've even seen it on um, that rubber garage material, sometimes that ends up causing um, electromagnetic interference. And it also comes from having way too many cables stacked on top of each other and cables running on top of each other. So making sure that all of that is nice and tidy, it's gonna be a huge benefit to the sim. Another thing is that when it comes time to troubleshoot, which it inevitably will, it's going to be a lot easier if you need to go back to the computer and start unplugging things to replug them back in. It's going to be a lot easier if you've got all of that organized, because if not, believe me, it's going to be a headache and you're going to drive yourself crazy. Another key point with cable management is specific to wheels like this that run with a USB cable. Fortunately, on this wheel deck, I have a fixed USB plug, but I've seen time and time again where uh, this cable ends up hanging way too low. So what I ended up doing was taking some cable management clips that I fixed to the bottom of here and I was able to just keep all the slack of this cable uh, tucked away so that it's not hitting me anywhere and I can move around, I can get out of the sim and kind of move around as much as I need to and it's, it's never disconnected on me and it's never uh, gotten in the way of me getting in and out of the sim so it's quite comfortable to have it that way. Speaking of comfort, that brings me to my next point. I've seen so many rigs that end up being built and their users just end up putting it in some sort of configuration and don't adjust it to, to their size or to their comfort. So when I work with a driver, um, and this is something that you could do with a friend, is I usually stand at the front of the rig while they're sitting in it. Uh, we loosen everything up and then the wheel deck and the pedals, all of that stuff is, is moved um, so that the driver is as comfortable as possible. And you know, I know some people might say that um, the driver position is not going to affect performance, but at least for me, if I can be just that much more comfortable, um, it's more energy that I can put into focusing on, on driving itself. Another thing with comfort is that we spend a lot of money, time and effort into being able to have a simulator like this. So we want to use it and being able to be comfortable on this thing, you're going to want to use it more. So. Um, that's why it's kind of important, at least to me, to be able to be comfortable in the sim. The next thing I want to talk about is updates. And if you're running the PC directly just for the simulator, then this shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. So there's two things. There's Windows updates and specific to iRacing, there's all of the iRacing updates. When it comes to Windows updates, I know it can be very overwhelming and scary to update Windows, be it that you know, sometimes updates, you know, we, we don't know what's coming. And sometimes things can either get corrupt or things can change and then things can be moved. And then uh, for people that are not very comfortable with computers, that could be kind of scary and overwhelming. So far, if you're running it just for the sim, it's not that big of an issue. And we can always backtrack. So if there's ever any issue that way, remember that uh, we can support you. It's uh, velocityprosims.com forward slash support request. So if your PC ever gets into an issue where you don't know where things went, just give us a call, give us an, or send us an email um, and we can, uh, we can sort you out. Making sure that Windows is updated, it's, uh, it's gonna make things run a lot smoother and the more and more you stay on top of updates, the less risk you have of a random update coming in automatically and then moving things around and then changing things around without you even knowing. And that's when a lot of confusion can come in. The next thing is the iRacing updates. And there's either the um, required updates or doing the all update option. I always prefer to do the update all because I've seen it so many times where I do a required update for just either a car or a track that I need. And it ends up doing, uh, it ends up being a corrupted update. I saw too many times where after doing an update like that, the session wouldn't load. So. Ever since then, I've just always done the update all and I, I rarely have a problem. My next point is, you know, a lot of us have pets in the house and for some reason it seems that pedal decks are a complete magnet for dust and pet hair. So I keep 
a little duster here, an electric duster, and we have a small vacuum. So I try to keep that stuff vacuumed and cleaned as much as possible. You know, I dust the wheels as much as possible just to make sure that there's no dust getting in any of the sensors or any dust getting in anywhere. And then of course, you know, as you're walking through the house, um, you're gonna drag hair and dust onto the pedals. So it's best to keep that stuff clean. My last point, and it's probably gonna be the most important one. So if you take anything from this video, it's this, and it's to try to use the simulator as much as you can. Uh, the more you use it, the more you can turn it on, the more you can get things operating and running, um, the less chance you have of things um, failing randomly and the less chance you have of having a major headache. So keep that all in mind. Um, it's been about five years now that this simulator has been running without any major issue. So I'll keep doing what I'm doing. And if I come up with something new, I will let you know. Remember, once again, we're at velocityprosims.com forward slash support request. If you ever need anything with your simulator, that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you later.